It has finally happened. The Utah Jazz have traded Donovan Mitchell. The full tank rebuild is on. But they did not trade him to the New York Knicks. Did not trade him to the Miami Heat. The Washington Wizards. No. Donovan Mitchell is heading to the Cleveland Cavaliers. The Cavaliers swoop in. Steal him out from under the Knicks. Right as the Knicks are announcing that they've signed R.J. Barrett to a four-year hundred and twenty million dollar extension i i can't believe it i think you know i've been i've been thinking about this since the news broke a couple hours ago and like trying to put all my thoughts in order before recording anything because i didn't want to just come on and ramble on but like you always think about trades and like winners and losers and i was going to do that originally for the video but to be honest like this is a win-win type of trade. Like, I'll start with the Cavaliers. Um, so the official trade, the full trade, the Utah Jazz received Colin Sexton, Laurie Markkinen, Ochi Agbaji, three unprotected first-round picks, and two pick swaps with the Cavs. Um, and the Cavs get back Donovan Mitchell. To me, looking at this, this is a, a fairly good trade on both sides. Like, so, like I said, I'll start with the Cavs first. Last year, it was rumored that the Cavs were interested in going after um, CJ McCollum when the Blazers were shopping him around. Uh, they ended up obviously not pulling the trigger. He goes to New Orleans. But that should have been a signal that this was something that, you know, was, was in the cards for them. They overachieved last year with Colin Sexton missing the majority of the season with a meniscus injury. Darius Garland blossomed into an all-star. Jared Allen emerged as one of, or well, shouldn't say emerged because people that watch the Nets knew that, but Jared Allen, one of the best young rim protectors in the game. Evan Mobley came in and was honestly the rookie of the year favorite for a while in the season as well. And the Cavs overachieved, made it to the playoffs, and it should have been clear. It should have been clear that based on that, they were going to be looking to do something big. Adding in Donovan Mitchell is a huge W for them because it gives them that extra scoring punch when teams are focusing on, you know, any of the other shooters. Now, obviously, the big trade-off here is going to be defense. Colin Sexton is one of the best perimeter defenders in the league, uh, at least as far as, like, on guards. He plays a lot bigger than he is. And more importantly than that, like... He has, I, I hate to say it, but he has that dog in him. Like, he loves just being being a pest. And he, he, like, clearly lives for shutting other players down. And that's something that you can't really teach. Donovan Mitchell was a was a great defender in Louisville. He uh, he showed a lot of flashes of that his rookie year with the Jazz. But as his, his offensive load with the Jazz has, has gotten, you know, more... More heavy, more more. He's he was doing more. He he kind of just stopped trying as consistently on defense, which I mean, I you can't fault him. LeBron's been doing it for five years now at least, like where he's conserving energy for offense, like by not playing defense. There's that clip of Kuzma shoving him into into place on the Lakers, like. So you can't be mad, but. I think for, for the Cavs to truly get everything out of this that they can and that they probably envision, they're going to need him to try a little bit more defensively. Darius Garland is going to have to um, just keep making efforts as well. No one's expecting them to immediately become top defenders in the league. Plus, they're pretty, they're pretty covered with having you know Isaac Okoro and Karis LeVert in the rotation to, to deploy for for those perimeter bigs and those wings as well. So as long as they're putting in effort, this should be okay because at the back end, at the rim, Evan Mobley and Jared Allen are two of the best when it comes to the last line of defense at the rim that we have in the NBA. The Cavs have both of them. They are probably, I mean, uh, top five. I don't like putting out numbers randomly. So point is, the Cavaliers can make this trade because they aren't giving up the assets that are going to weaken the defense. If the Knicks, so the Knicks are obviously the team that everyone expected him to go to. It's kind of where Donovan Mitchell wanted to go to, being a New York kid. But they hold Pat, they sign Barrett, 
and it, you know it's a it's a loss for them from a from a fan base perspective because I'm sure a lot of fans are pissed right now that you know he's going to the Cavs and not the Knicks. But if you think about it, the centerpiece of the trade was going to be multiple firsts in R.J. Barrett and a Brunson Donovan Mitchell backcourt without the same high level of rim protection that the Cavs offer just kind of weakens the team. R.J. Barrett may not be the scorer that Donovan Mitchell is. Who knows? I think he still needs to be put in the perfect situation. I don't think we've seen what his peak can be yet. I think he's someone that's going to be like an Andrew Wiggins, where like you find his perfect fit, and he immediately elevates and shows you know all the flashes of potential that everyone has has been you know glimpsing and waiting for. So I understand the Knicks holding Pat. I think it's bad on a PR level, of course, but it's a smarter move in the long run, basketball wise, because you don't want to weaken your team for the sake of adding in a star. For the Cavs, this doesn't weaken the team. Like it says, it's a bummer to see Sexton go. I really, really enjoyed the Sexland Cavs. Like that's such a fun team, and they complemented each other so well. But the Cavs had all this success last year with Sexton basically not playing. Now they upgrade that two spot to be one of the best scorers in the league and a player with proven playoff experience. And it just makes it makes perfect sense that they would want to do that. Now, I don't know where this puts them in the hierarchy of the East. I was talking about this with a friend of mine earlier. And we were saying, you know, are they top six? Because you have at the top of the East, you have the Bucks, the Celtics, the Sixers, the Nets, the Heat, and then probably the Cavs ahead of, you know, the Hawks and those, those like fringe playoff teams. But... I kind of think that the potential for this Cavs team could go a bit above the Heat. I would say almost five five seed or home court fourth seed team. Uh, but at the same time, you know that's that's a lot of room for error with injuries for other transactions. Who knows? But to me, this raises the Cavs' uh, floor and ceiling immediately. Obviously, he's a top scorer in the league. He's a young superstar. The Cavs are smart to pull the trigger on this. Lori Markinen. Uh, was good in flashes for them. He com- completed his career rehabilitation after a not too good start with the with the Bulls, and for the Jazz on the Jazz end of this, the tank is on. The Wembenyama tank is on. Now, one thing that I thought was really interesting about this trade is it came out that the Jazz had signed Colin Sexton to a seventy-two million dollar extension that was fully guaranteed. So the fact that they are more comfortable paying Colin Sexton $72 million over trading for R.J. Barrett and extending him kind of gave me pause and made me think a little bit about just what they think about Barrett or just what their plans may be. But I'm sure part of it might have just been value as well. And Danny Ainge, the king of the asset, uh, now has 13 unprotected or lightly protected pick swap and picks. Uh, through 2029 just from these trades just from the Rudy Gobert to the Timberwolves trade and now Mitchell to the Cavs so he is stockpiling assets the Jazz still have some players that they can make moves with they could trade Jordan Clarkson they could trade um, Mike Conley Boyan Bogdanovich Rudy Gay is still there and could be a good uh, pickup for a team like the Timberwolves who need a a smaller player who can play the five if other teams try to run Gobert off the court. Like, I'm surprised that hasn't happened yet. But they're not done is the point point here. The tank is on. It's going to be probably a rough rough season for Jazz fans and for League Pass watchers. But this puts them right right in line for Victor Wembanyama, who is going to be presumably the top pick this, this year, the highly touted prospect, the French player, seven feet with the jump shot. So who knows? Who knows? It's going to be the Jazz and the Spurs probably tanking out west. And then we'll we'll see what happens with Eastern Conference teams. But all in all, every both teams got what they wanted. The Jazz get the picks that they want. They get the flexibility that they want. They have a couple younger players now that they can do with what they want. And on the flip side, the Cavs get that, that big name shooting guard that they can count on when Garland just can't do everything himself. Or on nights that Mobley doesn't have the shot falling, it's it's a great insurance policy. But it's more than insur- an insurance policy, and that's kind of where I'm having trouble like 
fully articulating my thoughts here is because this isn't just an insurance policy. This is a bigger deal for Cleveland than that. But it's, it's also like this team was so close that it's addressing the needs of the team without weakening it further. Like, I love this move for the Cavaliers. I really like watching the Cavs. I have a lot of family in Ohio, so I've had a rooting interest in them for a long time. And this iteration of the team has been tons of fun to watch develop. I love Darius Garland. And to watch him last year take the leap into an all-star level player was really, really cool to see. And now you give him another all-star caliber backcourt partner. And to me, it's just the sky's the limit. I don't know if they're going to, you know, make a run all the way to the finals or something. But this team is going to be as fun as it was to watch last year. It's going to be even more because you're going to have a lot more room for those high scoring outputs. And I think Donovan Mitchell is going to fit right in. I don't know what's going to happen as far as like he really wanted to go to New York. But I think the uh, the system in Cleveland, the coaching staff clearly has the trust of all of the players and and I think he's going to like it there. I think he's going to fit in great because it is such a young, hungry, competitive team. With the Jazz, it felt like everything had kind of just gotten stale. And that's that's okay. That's the last point I want to make before I get out of here. I think a key part of this has to be what the coaching staff did with the handling of the Kevin Love situation. Because Kevin Love is a dude who two years ago was throwing the ball at the back of Colin Sexton on an inbounds play, then standing there and watching the opponent grab it and lay it in under his basket. Like, that dude was about as toxic a teammate as you could get. And here now, he was a sixth man of the year, uh, popular popular mention, um, and he just completely bought into that role as the vet. He he rejuvenated his career and his reputation. He had a great last couple months of the season uh, shooting the ball. And he was one of the first reactions I saw to the trade. Like, he is bought in completely with what this team is doing. And I don't know if that's just because he didn't, you know, he saw the grass wasn't as green on the other side or someone got through to him or what. But rehabilitating th that relationship tells me that this coaching staff knows exactly what they're doing. And it gives me a lot of faith that this isn't going to just be a situation where they have Donovan for two, three years, whatever's left on his deal. I probably should have looked that up. I'm sorry I didn't. But they have him for those years, and then he just leaves to go to New York or L.A. or wherever he wants. Like, I don't think that's going to be the case. I think this is going to be one of those teams where where the conversations are, are clear, the direction is clear. It's not going to be, like, a stagnant thing like the Jazz had gotten to be over the last couple years and even more so than that the Cavs have proven that they're adept at drafting and developing these young players so it's not you're not going to hit a point where you're like okay we have to dump all of these assets for a third guy so I think this is the perfect situation I can't believe I didn't think about the Cavs more when it came to to possible suitors for Donovan Mitchell but seeing it on paper reading the Woj bomb it absolutely like it all fell into place it was like the end of that movie signs where he realized like everything just clicks into place and i was like oh my god like this is it why didn't i see this before so shouts and props out to the cleveland cavaliers for making this happen this is an incredible move for them i hope Cavs fans are rejoicing in the streets uh this is going to be a, a lot more fun to watch jazz fans i'm sorry it's okay um Knicks fans, same thing. I do think in the long run it's going to be better for the Knicks to not give up everything to go get him. I understand it hurts. I'm a Lakers fan. I've watched the team do a lot of things that I don't like and don't understand and that cause me pain. So I understand. But above all else, Cavs fans rejoice. This is this is a great day. Let me know in the comments your thoughts on the trade. If you enjoy or if you're a Cavs fan, Jazz fan, what you think, if you're happy with the return. That the Jazz got. If you're surprised that that's all it was uh, in the trade as well, I mean, five picks is a lot, but it feels like player wise, Sexton, who they weren't going to keep, Markinen, who, you know, if Laurie Markinen is, is your hold up in a Donovan Mitchell trade, there's bigger conversations that need to be had. And then Ochi Akbaji, who, who knows how he's going to develop. But you can go get Donovan Mitchell, you go get Donovan Mitchell. Uh, hats off to them. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, please, uh, NBA fans. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, have a good day.